Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. Last time, we looked at how we can use basic logic to arrive at the five methods of proof, and how each of those methods depends on other knowledge, which we must accept if we want it to be valid reasoning. This time, what does this tell us about the method of undercutting evidence, which we discussed a few episodes back? Here's the problem. Every piece of knowledge we gain leads to other pieces of knowledge. As we learn new things, even more things become clear. One clue leads to another, one piece of evidence to another piece. However, the reverse is also true. Without a certain piece of evidence, we can't rationally arrive at all the pieces of evidence that follow from it. For example, let's say that I decide that no chicken eggs exist. If I avoid all evidence of chicken eggs, other things, like chickens, the poultry industry, and so on, would seem like perplexing question marks to me. I wouldn't be able to understand them because without chicken eggs, they don't make sense. In the same way, when people undercut a piece of information in order to avoid the conclusion that it leads to, they often do so in a very short-sighted way, thinking only of that specific conclusion, and not bothering to question what else they're sacrificing in exchange. Often, it's so much that it can lead to absurdities, especially in the case of big things like logic, philosophy, and truth. Cutting off any of these bases for evidence also cuts off the basis of mathematics, science, perception, and greater than 99% of all knowledge we have, yet many people fail to realize this. Remember, logical consistency lies at the heart of our ability to perceive the truth. Truth cannot contradict truth, so we need to be consistent with claims we make. We can't afford to undercut a method of proof when it's convenient for us, while at the same time implicitly relying on it to support our faith in math, science, or perception. Now, this doesn't mean that we can never question things that we at first believe are true. What it means is that when we undercut evidence, we need to be careful not to also undercut something that's essential to ourselves and our ability to understand reality. Honestly, I don't mind the thought that my basis for knowledge might not be the best one. However, you've got to do more than just tell me it's wrong. Give me a consistent basis for your own knowledge first, before attacking the foundations of knowledge in general, or you may find yourself without a logical leg to stand on. Next time, let's look at the Bible with the number one question about it. Who gets to interpret the scriptures? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.